God, dude. I'm flying. What's up, everybody? My name's Danny Ferrari. My name is Parker Ament. And we are Excellent Sound, and we are back with a slapper of a video. Highly requested. Hugely requested, I'm aggressively yelling like fucking... Danny is fucking loud right now. Mick Jagger in the fucking microphone, dude. Look at that. Just making out with that SM7. Making out, dude. Ooh. We're going to show you guys how to fucking master your shit loud. AF. Loud AF, like excellent sound. Like excellent sound. Minus 3.8 luffs is what we got this what song that? to. Minus 3.8 luffs. Yeah, minus 3.8. What does that mean? Loud, un... Nobody fucking, fucking knows. Nobody knows. Just kidding. Nobody knows how to use a compressor, but we're going to show you how to... We're going to show you guys how to use... <laughs> Nobody knows compressor. how to do it at all. <laughs> so uh, we have a mastering rack down in the download description below. So make sure you guys go grab that. Um, also, make sure you guys, if you're new here, make sure you guys like the video, comment down for a chance to win a pack of your choice, and of course, subscribe. And also, why are we doing this, dude? What song was that, bro? This is the theme song to our new, brand new pack a, called... It's a visual pack. It's a visual pack. It's called Brand Builders. Brand Builders. Whoa, pack. whoa, whoa. Wait a second, guys. Don't you only do samples? No, we no, don't. We don't. We don't. We do visuals, guys. Guys... Brand builders and girls, let me tell you what this is all about, okay? We have been working on this for over a year, okay? Yes, secretly. Secretly. Couldn't no one tell was anybody. Allowed, okay? People have always asked us, as you see in the video, like, where's who does your visuals? How do I do visuals like that? We have the perfect solution for you guys. This is essentially a pack of clips for you to be able to create your own music videos, like if you've seen our mid-temps video, uh, if you've seen our in-your-house video. Uh, also, too, to be able to create your own artwork. And don't worry if you're if you have no idea how to do that. It's it is the simp the way we've designed this thing is yeah. so simple for you guys to start making your own brand to start looking professional. The biggest deal is that how easy it is going to be for you guys. Like we came up so with the easy. whole program for yeah. you guys of how to actually build your brand and help make music videos like super easy with even free software. Correct. So uh, we're not going to go too deep into that right now, but. Um, make sure you guys are on our email list. Early access list. The link is in the description down below. You can sign yes, up now. Is. And yeah. you will be receiving uh, bonuses, which include this project file and a sample pack, which we made using. We made this track with the sample pack that comes included with it. <laughs> and we're giving it away yeah. for free on the early access yes. list. And we'll show you guys some more of that stuff. Yeah, let's go ahead and get in. Let's talk mastering, bro. But you got it. So before, before you get into like branding your product right because you know that's really important to be able to brand your, your product and yeah. get professional looking stuff to make sure you guys look legit mm -hmm. before you get into branding you got to have the right product and you got to have the product sounding good you have to have the content you got to have the content right and we can help you along the way with developing a brand kind of finding your lane and stuff like that and just creating content for people to always be uh, checking you out and always have new things on the horizons for people to be able to keep their interest. That's the whole point of Brand Builders is to help new people be able to start yeah, uh, like you already have your, your music. Your music sounds yeah. great, but you need everything else that comes with it. You need the whole entire package. So that's that's our goal right now is to help you guys fill in the gaps, exactly. everything that you guys are missing. Because we got you know we get we get songs all the time, Danny, all the time, and, and they sound amazing. They're like incredible. We're like blown away. Uh, but then we go to their Instagram or we go to their SoundCloud and it's just like there's nothing there. And it's like, who, it's are, who are these producers? You know, what are you guys doing? Like, what is your story? And that's why we thought doing the uh, the mastering video would be a really, really great segue into brand builders because it's helping you guys develop the product and make it better. So this kind of like a finalizing touches yeah. on your actual production. So let's jump into mastering. Let's go over a couple things about as far as what we knew about gain staging and mastering. So let's go ahead and jump into Ableton. So now that we got uh, our track, so pretty much what you want to do is me and Parker like to throw our master on a little early. Some people are different. But, yeah. Uh, the way that we kind of do this is we like to throw our master on usually when we're starting to, to work around the drop. Yeah. So even, even sometimes when we're going into the bases, correct. you know, kick and then we add some bass and we're like, oh, it's time. Yeah, because the thing is, is with with an actual master, um, a limiter, which is really what it's about. We're going to go over some of the elements of what a master is. But a limiter really comes into play when you're using it with drums or like a sub. You can hear what it's doing and you can hear if it's going to be doing it too much or too little. And at that point, that's why we like to have our master on. By the time, we usually have a drop idea so we start throwing in the master. And there's actually a legitimate reason why we actually do it naturally. Right. And the reason is because like the low frequencies is the most energy in the track. If you think of like a low frequency like sine wave, yeah. it's like eight feet long. Yeah. And, and if we're thinking in like software terms, like 
that's getting crunched into right. your limiter on the master. So like exactly. the second you guys get low end, like that's when you got to start mastering. Yeah, exactly. That's a know? really great point. That's, that's why we do it naturally. And a big part of mastering is, is correctly gain staging, which is what we have set up here and we have buses, right? So you cannot have a good master without having a good mix, guys. I'm going to turn off the master and you'll be able to hear the mix and you're going to be like a little surprised at some of this stuff, but yeah. it'll make sense, I promise. But first we have like our drums, right? So all of our drums, if I bust these, you can hear all of them are into a group. They're all getting equally processed. If you notice my faders too, I wanna to show you that. Everything is kind of pretty much set to zero. Look at my snare right now, by the way. This is a really important point. Look at that. Red. Huge. Red. 4.5. Is just a color. Yep. How does it sound? Sounds awesome so, sounds killer sounds titties so what that's because the master is on right mm -hmm. so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have appropriate summing going on and grouping and gain staging right so what that means is is if i take all my drum elements like my kicks and my snares and process them all into one group now i'm not even have anything on this actual drum bus but just the actual signal going into the bus itself is very very helpful it comes into play with side chaining as well, uh, which we'll talk about. But yeah, first off, I have my kick. It's a very basic, um, th this kick is from the sample pack, actually. Th th throw out the sample pack, bro. That's the sample pack. There it is. Yeah, so all these samples are in there. But yeah, like this kick essentially is in there. And uh, what I have is just a little bit of cut on the low end, which I normally don't do. Um, but I did it in this case because we have a really heavy sub. But if you could see the mixing, it's very basic. It's all about sample selection. This you could see this snare that we're using right here. It was actually bounced in the project and then we made it into a snare. It was like a layer of like four or five different snares, but it's super heavily compressed, but it was just giving us the right amount of- It's like a block. It's a block, yeah. <laughs> Normally you don't want your stuff like that, but it sounds really good yeah. in this sort of scenario. So in this scenario, it's fine. It, well, all that matters is that sounds good. Everything is- You were saying too, like it's like lucky, you know? Yeah. That's a lot of luck too. Yeah, like sometimes. We just tried to, we just, Made that snare. Correct, exactly. Out of four snares, and it's a block. It sounds great. Sounds awesome. No rules. Um, and then also, too, like with, uh, you know, mastering, a lot of people are, you know, average for EDM stuff is about minus six or seven. It's even louder than that, too. I was talking to Borgor uh, yesterday, and he was yeah. like, dude, it's minus two. And I was like, I just got to, like, minus four. Like, what are you talking about, bro? And <laughs> yeah, we were all so, stoked, and then he said that. So, like... <laughs> It minus really realistically minus six minus seven with having it sound good loudness but and the way that you get better at loudness is that you just master more tracks it's not necessarily something that you can just like all of a sudden turn up and it sounds good it doesn't work that way you got to have a good mix you got to make sure you cut all your lows and make sure that you're doing like what we're talking about about bus processing yep so you can kind of see even this snare doesn't really have any low cut it's just kind of basic but the first thing you want to do is make sure you low cut all your instruments uh drums first we like to have the master on in the drop because that's going to be the loudest portion of the song uh, a lot of panning goes in too. I think, yeah, look, you could see our cymbals have auto pan on too. This is actually creating a stereo space within the field. If I solo it, you can hear, it's really important to have that. Dancing. Yeah, it's very subtle too. It's like when, when it's in the mix. Correct. And they're just going back and forth and that's creating more of a space and a little bit of reverb too, just a short, small room. I like to have my cymbals like that. So yeah, this is basically mixing stuff, but yeah, I just want to go over it very briefly. Uh, same thing, not a lot of, t too much processing, honestly, just like EQing, picking the right samples. And of course you have some automation going on too with some cool effects. Ah, oh, here we go. Here's a little uh, drum sharpener that we're using. This is essentially a uh, transient booster where we're essentially pulling up a lot of the transients, pulling them out, compressing those little transients. We just got hooked up and shout out to Plugin Alliance. We're going to be showing you guys yes. uh, for sponsoring this video. Uh, they sent us a bunch of their plugins. If you ever use their transient designer, it's amazing. They're actually legendary. Like, They're legendary. They have all of the, the great emulations of like the classic SSLs, Correct. the Shadow Hills, like Apex, like all of that really The Brainwork sick. stuff is oh amazing. God. Yeah, it's we're, incredible. We're using stock Ableton stuff for this one, but we're going to use a little bit of Plugin Alliance and kind of show you some cool tricks about a new product they have. But if we had gotten it beforehand, I would have guaranteed I would have been using the SPL Transient Designer. But if oh, you don't have any sure. money and you can't get that, uh, check out the Drum Sharpener, the Drum Bus in Ableton 10. It works great. So yeah, all our drums are getting processed. So this is like a little bit of compression. This is what's happening right here. It's really compressing that very beginning transients, which is what you really want to 
come out in your master, okay? Next, we have our synths. Uh, as you can see, oh, sorry, let me go back to the, the drums, but the cymbals and stuff had their own sidechain. Synths themselves, so these are like any pads or any chords or anything like that. You know, big old pads. A little bit of processing. You can see some EQ. Uh, very basic. I don't want to go in too much into them. But essentially, they're all going to the synths bus, which is getting processed together. Dude, cue the fucking music, bro. Light up this fucking bowl of nods real quick. Oh, okay, so let's talk about something, guys. When you're processing your synths, okay, or your drums or anything, you wanna just use just a little bit of compression, okay? What you wanna do is like if you were cutting somebody's hair, right? And you got that little long pieces of hair, you got that, you wanna just cut it off. You don't want those little peaks in there, but you don't wanna cut too much, right? Yeah. Because then you're gonna have a stupid haircut. I'll have a fucking mullet. You're gonna have an Ellen haircut or some shit, dude. <laughs> Ellen degenerate. <laughs> a little Ellen degenerate haircut, dude. <laughs> So yeah, uh, really important that when you're when you're doing uh, you know bus processing or group processing, have just a little bit of compression. Don't overdo it. As you can see here, we have OTT with 40% pulling up some highs, mids, and lows. So we got a really nice tightening everything. We're more like gluing. Yeah, think together. of it as like a roof. Yeah. You know, you're just putting a roof on it. You yeah, got all exactly. these like sounds going all like this. You just want to fucking put a just little container on. Not there. too much of a roof. We don't want to cut yeah. it off. We just yeah. want a little bit. And I'll show you kind of a visual element about that later. So, yeah, we have just a little bit of reverb. Uh, we got the OTT. We have the filter, which is using just for uh, production-style stuff, filtering in. And then a low cut, right? Pretty basic. Nothing really crazy. Sounding really nice, right? Same thing with the brass. Uh, just real basic low cut. Uh, we processed these samples already. And then into the drop. So the drop is is where we want going to be the loudest. We have a lot of different effects going on, but really there's no processing besides the side chain. Heavy side chain, making sure that kick is coming through. Yeah, that's right? huge side chain. Huge if, side chain. If this video does really well, let's say we get a thousand likes, we'll go over some of the sound design in this and a little bit more production. If you mm -hmm. guys want us to jump into this project file more, but. Yeah, you can see all of my drop elements are in one group, and then I have separate groups here sometimes too, like for the uh, for like the mega saws that are kind of happening right here. These are all getting processed together, but they're still going to the drop group, right, with the same side chain. This I, I have these processing, which is great about Ableton Ten, is you can do groups within groups. That's the beautiful thing about Ableton. Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, I don't and, know of anything else that does it that easily. You no, know, you could yeah. ox into another ox or bus into another bus, but like this just. It's visual. It's very visual. Yeah. It's very, very easy to use as well, too. And here we have a little bit of low cut, and then we have some stereo mid-side uh, mid EQ where I'm kind of pulling up some sides essentially from here to kind of make them wider. The layering is really important, too. We have mega saws kind of panned hard left and hard right, I believe. Yeah, one is hard left, one's hard right, and then we have this like sort of buzzy sound underneath. <laughs> And of course, layered with a choir, that's like another huge, like Alinium sad boy type shit. Yeah, that mega saw like panning uh, technique yeah. that we just showed you, that's like an old school trick that yeah. they would do back in the day if they would just like detune one of the saws exactly. on one side just to make it wider. Right. Because if it's the same thing, you're, you guys are going to get phased. Said this guy came in here and started showing us that. And that's yep. what we kind of learned from him. If He's you guys, like one of the masters. Oh, his that shit, shit sounds oh so my good, God. dude. If you guys want to see a uh, you know a sad boy pack from us, sad boy fucking yeah, trap or sad boy future bass, <laughs> that would be so much fun. Let us know. It'd be fun, fun. to do. Um, so yeah, again, back to the processing. Now the sub. The sub is really important. Okay, so right now we have a. Uh, I'm just using a hip hop sub bass, which already kind of is limited, believe it or not, mm -hmm. in the actual preset itself. I think you can kind of see. Yeah, it has a saturator built in. Uh, we're using two saturators, though, on top of that. If I click the operator, you can see this is the hip-hop sub bass. You have a low cut, and you have a multi-band. Multi-band is really great for the sub. I'm going to talk about that later, too, as well. And then a little bit of saturation. The saturation, even though it doesn't have soft clip on, it's still essentially cutting it off. So if you play this sub real quick, look at that. It's, like, kind of bricked. Yeah. Right? Play it in, and maybe in context with the drums would probably be a good uh, way to show it too. With the side chain as well, the side chain is super important. 
This is where we would start mixing, actually, too. We would yep. start mixing at this point, master on, right, mm -hmm. with our kick and with our sub and our snare. Those are the first things we go to. Drums. Okay. So what we have here is we have two saturators, and what these are doing is these are kind of hitting the key of the song frequency. So I went ahead and did uh, the whole frequency to note chart. If you guys don't smoke nugs like us, I would definitely recommend smoking a fat nug yeah. and go Google a pick, frequency to note chart. Yeah, pick up a bag of nugs. Bag of nugs. And then for visual purposes, I'm going to use a Fab Filter Pro L to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about, trimming the, the little tips of the hair off, right? Pro yeah, L the one. other thing too is that the, 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 the this hip-hop bass takes up so much space it really in does. the sound spectrum like mm -hmm. that's why we throw our master on at this point correct yeah and you really it's, want to have an idea because which we'll show you with the pro l i'm yeah, sorry yeah. you were gonna you were gonna add i was just that. gonna say like it takes up the whole sound spectrum yeah, like that very, whole lower yeah. it's a huge part of the song it's a very very important part of the song as yeah. well so with pro l i'm gonna go ahead and, and i just have pro l on here fab filter makes great shit we never use it in things but i'm gonna use it for visual purposes right now you see that right there When you're using a limiter, you do not want to have too much gain reduction. What I see a lot of times is this. I want it to be loud. Maybe you're doing it for artistic reasons. Yeah. But you can already see, even without Fab Filter, that's because we have the saturator on. If I Maybe if I turn this off and I turn this off, they might get a good visual. Let me turn this one off. Oh, that one's off. You can see the side chain coming in. And it's essentially just keeping it barely trimmed here. But you can see before we even got to it, we have our saturators going with the soft clip on, cutting it even a little bit more, more trimming. You said shaping the box, essentially. Right? Yeah, and, and saturation is like perceived loudness, you exactly. guys. Like it's, it, it doesn't change the decibel rating. It's no. just making it sound louder than it actually is. Right. That's so a big part of it, too. It's a huge part. And, and, and we're doing it pretty minimally right here. Yeah, smoke that shit. Tell them about saturation, bro. Oh, saturation is loudness perception. So it's it's gonna make if you guys add little little bits of saturation in steps. So like for example, right here we have two decibels on one saturator at sixty five percent, and then we did another one at two, and then we went back to sixty five again. It's adding just a little bit of saturation each time, and it makes it sound louder. Yeah, louder Even than it is. Even though it's not, is. yeah, the decibel rating is not going up. It's just making it seem louder than it is, but it's really not. So That was a huge nug, bro. Huge. Solid hit. Yeah, dude. So saturators, like he's saying, is, is, is they're very, very useful tools when you're, when you're prepping your mix before master, right? Yes. You can use Pro L, right? You can use those type of linters. We like to use saturator a lot with either soft clip on or off. It depends. But again, the group processing is a big part of it in a solid mix. So I'm showing you the fab filter, right? It's not really being, I mean, it kind of is being used, but you can kind of see where it's just barely cutting it off. I don't want to see, you don't want to see this red thing going. Yeah. You don't want to see that, okay? Unless you're doing it artistically or for whatever reason. But you want it to be just barely, barely being used. It gets a little bit louder each time. That's with the busing too. It adds a little bit of loudness. The saturation makes it perceive louder. Our ears think it's louder, but reality and we're is we're not even it still to the mastering clear. chain. We're not yet. even there yet, dude. And that's that you you almost you almost blew the secret. I did, huh? To steps. Yeah, it's steps. steps. Exactly. So we're getting we're getting to the master, you guys, but like Danny was saying, like it's you're, you're inching towards getting right. as loud as you can. As right. loud as possible. And the, the big thing that you're going to find, and we're going to talk about this in the master, which is, I think, what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to want once you're not going to want to do this before actually having your master on the way we do it. So we recommend having it put on and I'll explain why we're not really messing with the levels in a little bit. Right. So the effects is another thing we have processed here. Our groups here are very basic low cut and some side chain sometimes we'll add like reverb and delay but if you go through here most of the stuff in here has low cuts on it if it needs like a lot of sweeps uh some stuff has ott just expanding it out uh but yeah very basic right just the right type of elements in the right place and this is the loudest song i think we've ever done yeah i think um, so too if you guys want to see us release this as an original, let us know. Let us yeah. know in the comments because I feel like this track's sick. We had a lot of fun making. I love this track. Builders. There was some crazy like 
different drop variations that yeah. we did. Like that could be like a drop B, you right. know, like, yeah, we could have dude. a ton of fun. We can make it go heavy or like oh fast God, or some yeah. shit. Okay. Sick. So let's say you got all your stuff bust in. You're all ready to go. Let's go ahead and now jump into the master. Okay. The part you guys are all here for. I'm going to go ahead and minimize all this shit up so we can kind of see it just a little bit better. Okay, so let's jump into the master. So I have a couple things here which we're going to talk about a little bit later. These are more metering shit. I'm going to turn that off. We're also going to talk about uh, this new plugin from Plugin Alliance that we're pretty excited about. It's really, really cool. Uh, we're going to be showing you guys uh, a little bit more about that. So the first thing on our master blaster, okay, this is confirmed. Confirmed. It was confirmed, It was right? confirmed. Conspiracy confirmed. This was and is Nightmare's actual pre-master thing that he used to use. I don't know if he still used it, but I got it from a friend of a friend and I wasn't supposed to give it to anybody, but guess what? You guys got it. Oh, it, I'm sorry. It's not exactly it's, his. It's a variation. It's a variation because we changed it to as we wanted to have all stock Ableton so everyone would be able to download it. Stock uh, Ableton. There's some other things too that we changed as well. Yeah, but it's very, very basic. When, when, go, when it goes into mastering, all you really want is like stereo, right? So how are we going to control the stereo field? How am I going to make it bigger, wider, right? How, how am I going to control the sub bass, compression, right? limiting and loudness I it's mean, also that's... yeah it's also exaggeration of what the mix is supposed to be Correct. you know so if you really want like a heavy bass mix you know yeah then the master should reflect that you know right so right off the bat we have a utility set up here to minus six okay this is a big 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 part about our um, mastering chain is that we don't really like to turn anything down i try to get everything to hit zero by itself without clipping but i'm gonna go ahead and play it <laughs> This is clipping, right? If I turned off this uh, utility, let me take the master off. Oh yeah. We can hear that kick, but that see that decision would not have been made if I left the master uh, off the entire time. Yeah, totally. But because the master's on, it is compressing that kick and that snare to a point to where it's really punching through. Mm -hmm. So that's why the whole idea about being in the red is bullshit. Like. If it sounds good, it sounds good. That's all that matters. And you want to make sure that your kick is punching through, your snare is punching through. And we're going to show you some more tricks with that as well. Yeah, I, I wanted to mention too that the this is a digital age of music, you guys. Like mm -hmm. when I started, uh, we were all worried about peaking and stuff and yeah. like pulling all the faders down. Like some me and my friends, we would start mixes at like minus 18 yeah, exactly. on the faders. And we still get songs that like we, we mix for clients and stuff. Right. Like at minus 18 and then it's hitting the, the master channel. Like so kissing quiet. at minus six, minus four, and it's like, oh my god! And then when we turn everything up, it's like, holy shit! Like shit is fucking everywhere. My shit hits zero before I even bring. Like my shit clips before. I mean, our yeah. shit clips yeah. before our we even bring it into sure. minus six. But you like, can see. yeah, this utility thing right here, just pulling it down minus six at the end, yes, is exactly the same as if you were to highlight all of your tracks and pull them by down. And minus it's a six. lot easier. It's so much easier, <laughs> right? And we're not even actually. People say to get it to minus six for mastering that's what we ask for people when they when we do a master for them yeah but the reality is is our shit's not at minus six even with the minus six utility on yeah we're clipping <laughs> we're, what are we clipping we're at clipping shit. 15 okay <laughs> but but the reason why we can do that is because the master is set up to handle that right yeah we've made good decisions on our mixes if i turn it down to minus six let's turn everything off we'll go one by one okay yeah, let's see what we're hitting at minus six. 9.72. You know, closer. You can hear the kick and snare are very, very loud. Those decisions were made after the master was put on. And the reason why is because they were already getting limited and compressed, but we wanted them to be loud. We like our kicks and our snares loud. loud That's just AF. how we do it, okay? So first thing, we have it set to minus six. Next is just a basic EQ of just mid side. All it is is just a low cut on the mid side. You guys can mess with this however you want. You guys can pull up some more. You can pull up some more sides where you want, okay? I'm actually gonna jump to the actual limiter here before we get, uh, actually no, we'll keep we'll keep rocking it this way, right? Yeah, yeah, keep rocking. Okay, next we have a multi-band compressor. We have one and it's just essentially, exp is this expansion, right? This is the expanding That's side. That's expansion, yeah. So we're expanding uh, the highs, mids, and lows just a little bit. You 
hear it just tightening up. Not too yeah, much, it's just a little even. bit. It's pretty even between all of the ranges, the highs, mids, and lows. Correct, and it's just barely tightening it up. Mm -hmm. It's just, just a little bit, not too much. You can see the ratio right there. It's one yeah. to one. Very, very, very small. Yep. Okay, after that, we have another multi-band dynamic. It's essentially doing the same thing, but it's at 69%. Uh, I think if you see it here... Yeah, 8 dB on the low end and then 7.9. This one actually really, I believe, brings out the low end when you have two of these. Yeah. It really, really helps with the low end when you have the multi-band compressors side by side like this. A lot of glue as well. Yeah, yeah, that's actually really surprising, right? The yeah. It's very gluing, even though it's, we're not using the glue compressor, right? Yeah, it's not OTT, you guys. It's not OTT. Just to make sure. Okay, and then we have this audio effect rack that's kind of already saved in here. Uh, it has a Pro L2 that we added, but we're gonna we, we normally use the glue compressor, which we're, that's what will be in the actual um, uh, rack itself. So the audio effect rack. Uh, compressor attack is very, very slow. The release is a little bit faster. I wouldn't say very slow, but it's pretty slow, right? You can see there's a compressor right here. So we're yeah. compressing. Again, that's adding toning it. so much. Another saturation that's happening, right, with a little bit of drive. This is just helping the, uh, the loudness. Very, very small amount of drive, 0.47. We could turn it up more. We can mess with the color, which is essentially the base uh, and the output and the saturation. All that's set to 100%. 1.49, one over one, little compression, little bits at a little time. Little teeny compression. Okay, and then this is the big one. This is the glue. This is the loudness. This is essentially where your limiter will go. I like to put it at the end. Some people put it in the beginning, but I feel like at the end we're essentially just capping everything. Yeah, off. dude, you gotta cap it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. I'm gonna. Uh, we have the glue compressor. If you guys want to match it right here, but this is a main thing too. Is very slow attack, very slow release, right? We want it just to be barely grabbing those little clips. That, that makes it sound natural. Right. Yeah, instead of it catching. Right. You know, when you limit too hard, it starts hearing it pump and, like, Yeah, release. you lose the transients, too, yeah. that way as well. Mm -hmm. So you can see the ratio set to 10 right here. That's essentially turning this into a limiter with soft clip on. Uh, threshold is... It's, you see, it's it's compressing it. It's definitely the most heavy compression of the whole chain, or limiting, I should say. Yeah. But the makeup itself is turning it back up to give it that loudness. And look, we're back. Yeah, we're fucking back. And look, I mean, turn that makeup gain up. Let's see if it... You can hear it starts See, to sound. That's, that's when it's when it gets clippy. Right. So you want to find that that sweet point, which I think was where did I have it at? Two point two. Two point two. It's like on the edge of distorting. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's on the edge. It's on the very very edge. If I go up like point one, it's going to sound distorted, right? Yep. And if I show you guys with Pro L, I'm going to put the uh, glue compressor off for right now. But if I show you guys with Pro L, let's uh, let's look at it. Look at that. Let me it go sounds, back to the it default. It sounds kind of uh, um, darker, too. A little Did bit, Did you yeah. notice that? Yeah, definitely a little bit darker. Yeah. It's showing what peaks that it's pulling down. That snare is turned up. It's now, like, properly set in the mix, where before it was super loud. It's yeah. essentially bringing it back down, and it was already kind of bricked, so we had to kind of do what we did, but that's okay. Uh, that's why it sounds really, really great. That kick is punching through the speakers. You can hear it. Like, it's really coming through. The side chain is really great. The bass is a nice, compact chunk, right? It's one of my favorite kicks that we've made, that's too. Great kick, it's yeah. insane it's really, really kick. good. Uh, so, yeah, you can kind of see what's happening with the pro L, And I like to use it just as a meter sometimes. Sometimes I just leave the glue on. I don't even use pro L, So Danny likes pro L2. I like pro L1. Yeah. It's crazy. I There's there's some, like, really cool presets in, in pro L1 that I like that I adjust uh, yeah, from. Yeah, that's why you but don't like pro L2. Pro L2, like, it's cool. But, you know, I haven't found, like, the settings that I like right. with all the new features. Oh. Um, show, them the, show them the option drag. Uh, trick with your game. You just taught me that. Oh well, yeah, so, I like, just taught Danny this. What do I do? So if you hold Option and you drag the gain knob up, it, oh, it adjusts it the turns, output. Yeah, it turns your your output 
gain down equally to what you're turning it up as. So you don't have to like keep balancing back and forth. You know what I'm was saying? Was that just a nug of nodge right there? That's a fucking nug that of nodge, dude. That was a smacker, bro. Smoke that so shit you guys up, can boys see and girls. The output is adjusted as you hold option, right? Yep. So if you are trying to get a good, uh, you want to limit the shit out of it without actually bringing up and, and clipping it too much, you can do that holding the option. Yeah, trick. if you just want to squash it and not turning it up, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it, exactly. And if I pull this up like plus two. Even that's like, okay, it's a little too compressed. I actually like the way the glue is sounding better for this track. Try different ones. Like there's a yeah. lot of different limiters. There's like clip shifters, another cool one. Another cool thing that I do is I'm I'm always messing with this stuff depending yeah. on like the track that yeah. we that we start on. Very true. I'm always messing with the saturation and I'm using and I'm messing with the the compressor. Yeah, that's a very really good point too. You can mess with the ratio as well too. So yeah, this it would look a lot different if we're making like a house track, for example. Right. I really appreciate the visualness of this too. Like I I like this mode for the compressor too. Yeah. Look, it's just just like we said, it's just cutting off the peaks, right? Yeah. It's exactly what we said. That's yeah. that's what you want. And it, it gets louder and louder each time, okay? So let's go ahead and get into the glue. And now let's talk about the loudness wars, okay? Right, Parks? So there's a war outside, dude. Before we actually, before we get into that, don't forget, guys, sign up for early access for brand builders, guys. If you guys want to build your brand and make your stuff look amazing, okay? If you guys want to get the sample pack that we're using for this track here and this project file and all the presets, so you got to be part of the early access list. There's artwork templates. There's like crazy clips. There's like, you guys have to check this out. We have the link in the description. Go yes. check it out. We have literally, there's so much stuff on this website. You have to check it out. Yeah. I don't want to go too deep into it, but like, this is what we found that every producer is like missing. Like this yeah. is got your music we're helping you with your music now we're helping you guys with the whole package the whole package yes. like, yeah imagine sending somebody a, a video like a visual video that you made to like maybe it's a label or something they're gonna be like wow this guy's like or girl is really on top of their stuff you know what i mean yeah like and it's not a it's not a gimmick either it's it, it not helps, even hard it get, helps yeah. your ears like listen to music too right. with visuals exactly so it's very interesting and we're gonna be doing some tutorials on how to how to use it and stuff like that but it's very 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 simple we promise we seen some comments like oh like do i need this crazy software yeah. no you can do it with iMovie it's mm -hmm. literally that simple but more details to come like parker's saying contest for that and as well uh i don't know if you guys are have already gotten tech house or not but the tech house insomniac contest for your track to be heard by the head a and r at insomniac is still going it's closing november 1st so if you guys didn't pick up your copy of tech house I definitely recommend make sure you guys go do that and send us your tracks so we yes. can send the best of the best to them. Okay, Get let's do what you got. You guys. Get producing. All right, let's go ahead and jump back into this. The other thing I have now is a utility. With This utility is just controlling loudness for the build. You can kind of see. It's set to minus one, but the time it hits the drop, it hits to zero. That's controlling the loudness, right? Essentially, I want the drop to be more powerful. That's a cool little trick to be able to do that. If you smoke Nodge, if you burn it like us, that's one way to do it. If you know, you know. If you know, you know, right? Um, and then next, what we have is we have this really cool new product by uh, Plugin Alliance called Streamliner, okay? And what this is, is this is essentially showing you how loud your track is, okay? There's other ones like uh, WLM, uh, which we're going to show you, but this is a little bit different, okay? Because Spotify... Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube, they all have different algorithms. So what happens is, is when you actually upload your song, it gets compressed and can kind of sound not as good as other places and can kind of ruin your mix, especially when we're trying to get super loud when we're talking about gain staging and all that yeah. type of stuff. It's really important that uh, you get something like this. We'll have a link in the description, but it's really, really cool. It's very new. And essentially what it's doing is it's giving you a target or a reference point for Spotify. So for instance, they're saying minus 14. Fuck that. We go louder than that shit. We go hard. But what's kind of cool is you can kind of hear how, how your mix is going to sound in Spotify. Which exactly. Which is really, really cool. A really great trick rather than having to upload it, right? Show them what our song sounds like on Spotify. What do I do? Match? Match. Right. Crushed. It's crushed. Crushed. 
but so it still sounds good. It still sounds good. So I might adjust my bounce for the Spotify, right? Same thing with Apple Music. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. A little quieter than I want, but that's fine. You could turn on the codec to see what essentially what it would sound at a different, uh, I believe that's different uh, kilobits. Yeah, and think about how much time this saves you guys. A like lot. when I first started uploading stuff to SoundCloud, I would like upload an MP3 and a wave to see like which one would sound better. Correct. And then you have to like wait for it to upload. You have to wait for all this, you know? And with Spotify, it takes weeks to, get, to submit your music yeah, you onto there. Know. Like you don't have time for that. You're going to have to, you're going to want to know beforehand. And this gives you a good picture. Another really cool thing too is like if you're trying to match loudness, you you can upload uh, a song here. So if you're trying to match the loudness, it'll read how loud it is and give you a target. So you can get an idea and then give you some visual readouts as far as the dynamic range, uh, different true peaks, uh, and of course, loudness like we were explaining. But you can load that in. They have some preset ones here. We have get low right now. So like, let's say we went to electronic and we did, uh, why don't, we'll do dance. I don't know, which one should we Knife do? Knife party, internet friends. Knife party, internet friends. There we go. That shit's Minus six. Let me turn the match off. Yeah. It's still getting there. It's going. <laughs> we're closing in. I already know we're lower than Knife Party. <laughs> no, we're, I mean, no, we're I mean, closing no, in. No, I'm saying we're yeah. louder. I don't want to play through the whole fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, we are. yeah. It takes a second to get it. But also, too, like you can load in other songs that you want here. You can load in your unmastered song, right? You were saying something about yeah, that. Yeah, I was saying you can actually load in because when you're when the classic way of mastering is you get a waveform. It's not you're not mastering in your session. The other way of mastering is you either have, you know, grouped stems out or you just have a two track. Um, so with this, you could have your like faux master as a reference or the client's master of what they right. thought it yeah. would sound like with the master. And then you could be referencing back and forth like that. Um, me and Danny, before we had this, we would have, uh, our reference track on external out. Yeah. So we can listen to it through w without That's going good... through our master. You should show them how to show them how to do yeah, that. Real so quick, let's say Danny. if you want to have a reference in here, right? You don't want it to go through your master, and that actually brings up a really good point that I'm I'm glad you're bringing that up because I want to talk about pre master too a little bit. Cool. This is a big video, but this is a, huge a video. lot of information to have, and I'm sure we'll cut it down as simply as we can. But let's say I brought in a reference track. Um, run that. These are all old versions of <laughs> <laughs> unbalances, <laughs> not prepared. Okay, so we got our uh, our track run that uh, loaded in from in your house. And essentially what you want to do is you want to see how it's going to master. You want to go to extension out. We're not going to play it because I don't think they'll be able to hear it if we do extension out. Will they? No, I think they will. Oops. <laughs> you got a solo. We like to set up a key. This is what we do for remakes too. Um, set up a key on your solo. We like to do a little squiggly line. And that really helps you just to be able to go back and forth. But turn this off so it just goes to solo. Yep. Let's say drop wise. Let's let's bring the drop over. This isn't the same tempo, but let's just bring it right here. Yeah. So you can get a good idea of how loud something actually is in comparison to your other tracks. Another cool thing, like we were saying with with uh, this this really cool plugin, the Streamliner plugin from Plugin Alliance is that you can also bring it in there as well and look at some of the dynamic range. Yeah, you don't have to do our way anymore in Ableton. If right. you have this plugin, it's just like fucking boom right Pretty there. Pretty easy. And another thing too is that like another way of like gain staging, like let's say my kick and my snare, I could have done this with the snare, but this goes in, in, in the, um, the same type of deal with uh, extension outs, where yeah. extension outs isn't going to be bounced to the master, right? But what you can do is let's say you have your kick and your snare, and it sounds so great with out the master yeah you're like dude it, it sounds amazing why is it sounding so good but then the master's coming on and it makes everything else sound good what you can do is you can create what's called a pre-master track so let's say i'm going to delete this track real quick i'm going to make a brand new track okay and i'm going to call this pre-master people pay thousands of dollars to hear what we're about to tell you right now. we do this a lot of times for yeah. like just trying to get um, our kicks right or our snares just depends on whatever it is because a lot of times that stuff gets crushed and you want it to be, you want some things to be crushed, but not. But essentially what you would do is you would take your actual master rack, okay? Turn it off here, all right? And then throw it on this pre-master, okay? 
And then essentially what you can do is you can have it set to in, okay? And then I could send what I want to go there. So let's say I want my- I uh, you can highlight all the groups. Yeah, you could do that, yeah. Um, right, let's say, and then change it. Let's tr Yeah, let's try that. Hold on, I gotta have everything opened up though. Uh, let's let the let's let the drop go, uh, but let's keep the well. No, the drums are gonna be. We want we kind of want everything going to the master in this song. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but let's just say so you can essentially go to the uh, pre master if you go out here. You can just set to pre master. Bam. Now all these are going to the pre master. If I solo it and arm it, but you see I don't have the synths going there. The synths are going to the master. If I unsolo, I don't have the uh, the synths themselves going to the master. So essentially what you could do is you could send things to different tracks so you can master some of them and not master them. So for instance, like I said, if your kick or snare is getting squashed, it's a good way to get around doing that. Another fun way of gain staging. If you guys- it's like group mastering. I think uh, yeah. Luca, Protolesi? Yeah, Protolesi? Luca. He Shout does, out Luca. Yeah, he does that a lot. Yeah. He Whenever does I watch his tutorials, shit. he's done. He's, he does crazy group mastering. Or maybe you have a lighter master on some stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? And then it goes to the master. So really, really uh, interesting ways for you guys to be able to play uh, with this and kind of learn a ton. Another really great thing that I wanted to kind of show very briefly, I'm going to go ahead and delete this pre-master because we don't need it anymore. Yeah. Everything's going back to the master, is this WLM meter. Uh, this is a really, really great, just simple meter we like to use too. I gotta put my master back on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there minus four uh momentary and then minus yeah almost minus four here too as well for the yeah. short term so another really great simple span makes a free one uh tons of different options out there for you guys to check out just wanted to show you guys different things hopefully you guys learned a ton from this video i mean it was a whole it was this a mouthful jam-packed full jam -packed. of information so much nugs that's about a, a a quarter pound of nug right there dude that's a pound of nug right there did i, I just say. loosen the microphone <laughs> You loosened um, it. Shout out to, um, if you guys want to get more project files like this, you guys can join our Patreon. Shout out all our patrons that support the stream. Let's go ahead and, uh, should, how should we bring these these ones out? You guys are huge. Maybe we should get like a, like one of those Ghostbuster fucking hoses. And like. just, <laughs> patrons getting splattered. This just kind of looks like we're doing something else. Oh, we're yeah. splattering patrons all over. <laughs> Bazooka and fucking patrons everywhere patrons everywhere oh god yeah Damn all over spray. the screen and then we grab this guy or girl and throw him throw. oh i'll take you him you want to hold him yep be nice you give him a look. patron oh, there you go Get the yeah, fuck out! Get of out of here. Okay, so thank you guys for supporting our Patreon. It helps support the channel. And if you guys, uh, you know, want to get a tons of project files and samples and presets, go to our Patreon right now. You guys can check it out. Check out all the different tiers. Thank you so much. Uh, like the video. Comment down below for a chance to win a pack. Again, uh, Tech House contest and of course Brand Builders exclusive access list is open now, guys. Only the bonuses are going to be available for uh, a certain number. Yeah, there's only going to be 1125 licenses for this whole thing. Right. It's like it's a visual pack. It's it's a little bit different than audio, so it's going to be exclusive, guys. So it's we don't be we don't want everybody to have this. So and stay tuned to the next videos that we're going to be doing. Uh, you're going to uh, announcing more information. Another really great contest with Brand Builders that we think is really sick. One this of the going to be crazy. It's gonna be a really great contest. I can't believe we're doing it's that. It's gonna one. be a huge. Uh, I'll just say this will be a huge jump start for somebody. So. Yes. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's play this out, and we'll see you guys and girls next time. Hey, can I say guys? No. Guys and girls. No, we can't say guys. We'll see everyone next Sub time. Sub and wobbers. Sub and wobbers. We'll see you all.